Here's a deliciously subversive thought for you, stats are ruining enthusiast cars. We use them to rank the latest models, critique them, and deify them. Sometimes the numbers happen to align with a bunch of intangibles, and the car becomes transcendent, like the Ferrari 458 specially, a very special thing indeed. There are cars with great numbers and very little charisma, I've driven many of them. And then, there are the number-based narratives that mislead us. For example, the hoopla around the Mazda MX-5's horsepower, or the continuing lack of a Toya Baru with a turbo. Frustrating crosstalk about purest platforms better understood on track than on paper. The 2017 Aston Martin V12 Vantage S is flawed, old, and weak, so say the insidious numbers. A mechanical watch doesn't keep time as well as a quartz one, the numbers say. A tube amplifier produces an inferior sound, the numbers say. The way to fight back is to stop this slavish devotion to the stats and go wind the thing out on good roads in imperfect conditions, which is to my mind the ultimate test of a grand tourer's competence. Southern California was rocked this winter by wild weather, much of the Angeles Crest Highway that dances along the spine of the San Gabriel Mountains was closed due to heavy snow. So much for Plan A some roadside rerouting led to some promising roads, so I pointed the Aston into the curves. The V12 roar is a profound part of this car's appeal. Uphill and building steam, the Vantage is a symphony's brass section playing the sounds of wolves on the hunt. Downshifts yowl and snarl like a pack crashing through the underbrush in search of prey. Under deceleration, it sounds like lupine static, unearthly and resonant, wound out it's a frenzied whir. Every stab of throttle brings an immediate response, sound and acceleration in equal measure. If you have even the barest appreciation of joy, you can't stay out of the throttle. This is soulful, warm, analog, but merely honest rather than consciously retro. There's nothing here trying to simulate an authentic experience, it is an authentic experience. It's all right there, under the long and delicate hood, 12 cylinders displacing 5.9 liters. And inside the cabin, a 7-speed manual gear shift lever that moves through a dog leg pattern. This watch requires winding, it's a tactile experience that the quickest, most sophisticated dual clutch automated manual can't touch. I can't describe the several millisecond difference between the Camaro ZL once 10-speed automatic and Porsche PDK's shift time, but I know, in intimate detail and perfect clarity, when I nail a 1-2 shift on the Aston's dog leg box or when I miss the 3-4 upshift and go into 6th, which happened at least twice. The pattern would be tidier with two fewer gears, there's plenty of torque to handle bigger ratio jumps, and it's not like an extra overdrive or two is doing much to help out the V12 Vantage S's drinking problem. Save yourself the psychic pain of watching the fuel gauge, or worse, the trip computer's consumption figures. The manual transmission is a rare piece of the Aston feels like it's there to compete in the arms race that inflicts the high performance genre. Otherwise, the more this car diverges from the pack, the better it becomes. That's in part because as its competitors introduce immense complexity for incremental gains in efficiency and huge power numbers, they also have to go to enormous lengths to camouflage the hardware's unsavory attributes. Think of piped in or simulated sounds that try a bit too hard to make up for the fact that a direct injection, forced induction engine sounds like eight sewing machines brawling with a vacuum cleaner. And think of how much effort, the thousands of lines of code and exotic plumbing, that goes into making turbocharged cars seem like they are. <laughs>